Good afternoon, and thank you everyone for joining the Needy Med Special Topic Webinar for World Sickle Cell Day. My name is Carla, and I'm the Education Coordinator here at Needy Med. Before we get started with the presentation, I'm going to go over just a few things. You can feel free to type any questions you may have throughout the presentation into the questions section of your GoToWebinar control panel. If we don't have the time to answer your particular question, please know we will follow up with you via email within about a day. Also, this webinar is being recorded and we will be converting it into a video and posting it on our YouTube channel. So let's get started. For those of you that don't know who Needy Meds is, here's a screenshot of our homepage. And I always put that up because our website is really the face of our organization. Anyway, Needy Meds, who we are celebrating actually our 20th anniversary this year, our mission is to educate and empower those seeking affordable health care. And we define education in two ways. One, by educating people about needy meds and the resources we offer, and two, by letting them know about other invaluable resources and healthcare topics, which is why we are so pleased to have our guest here with us today. It is my pleasure to introduce our panelist, Sanja Banks. Ms. Banks is the President and Chief Operating Officer for the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America. Prior to her current position, Ms. Banks served at St. Vinci Vince's Health System and held leader leadership roles within the United Negro College Fund, United Way of Central Alabama, and the City of Birmingham. And she is presently pursuing her doctorate of education in organization leadership and nonprofit management. And just so you know, that's actually a truncated version of her resume. Ms. Banks has been recognized um, in a myriad ways, and some of those ways she's been recognized are with honors such as Ebony's 30 Leaders Under 30, the Coca-Cola Women Who Care Award, and Birmingham Who's Who, just to name a few. So that gives you a sense of why we're so excited to have our panelists with us today. So I'm going to go ahead and without further ado, pass the mic and the screen to our guest, Ms. Banks. So please bear with us while we do that. There will be mm, just about a moment of silence. And here we go. Sandra, you should be able to grab the screen now. Thanks, everybody, and enjoy the presentation. Okay. Let's see. There you go. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So, greetings, everyone. Um, Thank you so much, Needy Meds, for um, inviting me to speak today and, and also being inclusive of sickle cell disease. This is, of course, um, Sickle Cell World Day, and so we're excited that you are giving us an opportunity to talk a little bit about sickle cell and what we're doing in the community. Um, it is a, a pleasure to be here, and as I stated, um, this is Sickle Cell World Day, so we take this, this opportunity, um, and we've been doing this since 2008, um, when there was a resolution placed on the floor of the United Nations to recognize sickle cell disease as a public health problem um, around the world, we really take this opportunity to raise awareness and um, to celebrate some of our accomplishments that we've made over the years, but also to talk about some of the things that are really needed within the sickle cell community. I'd be the first to say that we um, have definitely come a long way in the sickle cell community but we still have a long way to go, and so this is a, a great opportunity to discuss some of those things with you. Um, I titled this One Community, One Call, and that's simply because uh, we are one community fighting for one cause. We uh, know that there are a lot of deficits in the sickle cell community, and we each are um, concentrating on, on individual things. But honestly, we're all here for the same cause, and that's fighting for the betterment of individuals living with sickle cell disease and making sure and ensuring that they have quality access to care. So we'll get started. Um, I, I always start with this slide because this is something that we always talk about in the sickle cell community. And the slide, this is, of course, a picture of T-Boss, who used to be 
um, one of our spokespersons and our national ambassador some years ago, and she's still, of course, a national ambassador for sickle cell disease. But it says, I know I look wonderful, but you don't know my story. And that's what happens so many times in the sickle cell community. So we are the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America. We're national. We serve as the nation's only volunteer organization, um, working full-time on a national level to resolve issues surrounding sickle cell disease. Our mission, of course, is to advocate for and enhance our membership's ability to improve the quality of health, life, and services for individuals, families, and communities affected by sickle cell and related conditions, while, of course, promoting the search for care for all people in the world with sickle cell disease. So this is just some of our services. Of course, um, at CDAA, we focus a lot on raising national awareness. Um, we do research support. We provide professional health education, public health education. Um, we really focus on capacity building and technical assistance, particularly for our community-based organizations. We are member-based. And, of course, we focus on advocacy, and that's patient advocacy, but also legislative ad advocacy. Just a few of our accomplishments. Um, I, I'll, I won't go through all of these, but we, um, some years ago in 2011, we were very instrumental in establishing sickle cell disease as a national health priority through HHS. Um, we have done extensive legislative milestones. Um, we were SCDAA and, of course, through our grassroots efforts, through our community-based organizations, have focused a lot on getting legislation passed in sickle cell disease. Um, we have been responsible for the introduction of the Treatment Act. And, of course, um, we were successful about a year ago in um, giving or accomplishing a White House petition um, to raise uh, awareness and declare sickle cell disease a national priority. Uh, we served years ago as the Newborn Screening Coordinating Center. We um, have since been selected through HRSA as the National Backbone Organization for Newborn Screening, and that's something that we hold now. Um, and, of course, we were instrumental in spearheading the Sickle Cell Disease Congressional Caucus, which is headed up by Congressman Danny Davis and Senator Tim Scott. Um, so those are just some of the things we do. We also have over 40 member organizations throughout the U.S. Um, our 40 member, I'm sorry, 42 member-based organizations are within um, a compilation of 37 states. So just some of the things that our members do, um, as, as I said, SCDA is national, and our focus has always been to raise, the, to build capacity and help build capacity for our community-based organizations. Um, our members organizations, which are chapters um, who are individual nine, um, 501c3s throughout the U.S., um, they really do the work, and I have to give them all the credit because they work directly um, and indirectly with the patient population and their families, families. Our job, of course, is to focus on how do we help them to expand services and offer new services to families. So our, our community-based organizations are designed to serve individuals and families. Um, in their respective communities by offering programs and outreach. Um, they assist clients with finding quality care. They provide medical home referrals, medical home assistance. Um, they maintain databases of individuals and families that are being served. Of course, they perform community outreach, and then they focus a lot on educating the local communities on sickle cell disease and what's going on with their, in their prospective chapters. And so we're going to talk a little bit about um, why we are one community fighting for one common cause um, and, and talk a little bit about community advocacy and what, um, what we're doing, some of the deficits in the sickle cell community, and how we all could participate in working together to overcome um, many of those deficits. Um, so the movement, I love to use this slide because, you know, there has been a shift in sickle cell disease. I've only been with the organization approximately seven years, and one of my goals when I came on was to find out a little bit more history behind sickle cell, because at one point there was a huge movement, and it was in the 60s. Um, and so um, over the time, it seems like some of that has died down, and I wanted to kind of find out why. And so in my research, um, pretty much back then, and I say yesterday, 
Uh, sickle cell disease advocacy efforts began as a result of a number of babies dying or passing away. And so years ago in the 60s, babies were not living long uh, with sickle cell disease. And so there was a movement to, you know, to eradicate that. How do we keep our children living? And so with that, there was a movement with sickle cell disease and sickle cell disease awareness. Um, and through that, legislation was created, um, community-based organizations um, came into the fold, um, SCDAA was created as a result, and all of that was back in that movement in the 60s. But today, some of those needs have shifted. And while we know that our children um, that are living with sickle cell disease still need services, primarily where we see most of the deficit is shifting is with our adult population and our young adult uh, population. And so today, advocacy efforts continue as a result of complications and early loss of life for young adults and adults. Um, the life expectancy for someone with sickle cell disease is approximately 45 years of age, and that is very much relatively young. Um, and also, we know now that there is an overwhelming need for um, transition services. So what do our young kids, um, when they're moving into um, young adulthood, uh, what type of services are there out there? And to be honest with you, they're, they're limited right now. We're working on those things. And then, of course, we know that there are limited primary care providers um, that focus on sickle cell disease treatment. And so we're looking at what does a comprehensive model of care look like for an individual with sickle cell disease? And so some of the ways that we can empower one another and help one another um, is through synergy and, and some of the key roles that we take is, you know, what can we do? Um, and, and I always put it this way, we can influence, elevate, educate, and, of course, donate. So influence, you know, one of the biggest ways that we can influence is through legislation and changing policy. Um, some of the challenges that we see now with legislation is that um, we receive in the sickle cell community a significant dis disproportionate amount of funding for our program comparable to other diseases. And what that means is, um, just to give you an example, right now um, in the department of, in HHS and in the department of, um, in HRSA, um, I think sickle cell disease um, is, gets approximately um, to the tune of about $10 million, and that's approximately. Um, $10 million is not even 1% um, of the, the federal budget. And so sickle cell disease gets a very, very small amount of that. And when you look at it um, compared to other um, rare diseases, we are way behind. We also know that um, we have a Sickle Cell Treatment Act, um, and it has expired. It expired in 2009, I believe. Um, the President Obama was, was gracious enough to carry us in throughout his budget. Uh, but since then, um, we really need to get the Treatment Act passed because a lot of our programs that we want, it's particularly dealing with treatment and services and public health, are wrapped into that treatment act. Currently, we do not have any funding or a funding line item in within the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control. So pretty much this treatment act really needs to be um, um, enacted and it needs to be uh, renewed or reauthorized. And we also know that there's a need for a comprehensive model of care um, to ensure access to quality care. And that is basically how are all of these governmental entities really working together to create this model of care. Um, so what can we do? Of course, it's always great to join um, a collaborative legislative agenda. As national, SCDAA has been um, on the front end of working to get this, the Sickle Cell Treatment Act reauthorized. That's been our, our main focus for the last two years. Um, and it's, it's met with these challenges because of the climate in Congress, but we're still pushing. And so one of the ways is to get behind our legislative agenda. Um, we are working with ASH. We work with many organizations that are also supporting this agenda because we know how important it is for the Treatment Act to be passed. Um, also, of course, as always, get your legislative leaders to become champions for sickle cell disease and, of course, to join the Congressional Caucus. So legislators really, really listen to you, the constituents, um, those individuals who vote for them and put them in office. And so it's, it's great if you can reach out, send a letter, send an email, place a call, um, even pay an office visit to legislative representatives in your, um, both in the House and Senate 
to make sickle cell disease a priority. Um, educate. So, you know, one of the other ways that we can, we can work together is to educate and share knowledge um, with those that can influence them. Our challenge in this area um, has always been the knowledge base of sickle cell disease in the community. Um, it's relatively low, and what I mean by that is while you may ask someone if they know about sickle cell, um, they may have heard of sickle cell but not necessarily know uh, what sickle cell disease is or the impact of sickle cell disease on an individual. Um, and so we know that we have to figure out how to collectively overcome that challenge. And then also there's misconceptions about sickle cell disease that it still exists. There's so many people out there that think that there's a universal cure. While there is a cure um, through stem cell and there's also a cure through bone marrow transplantation, it is not a universal cure. It is not a cure that every individual with sickle cell disease can seek and actually be cured from. And so our focus is how do we get the word out that sickle cell disease still exists? And also um, some of the myths that go along with how um, people see patients in the community and individuals with sickle cell. So what can we do? Um, one, we can influence our network and partners um, to include sickle cell disease. And, and that's as simple as using social media to really bolster um, and educate about sickle cell disease. Um, if you are a provider, sharing your links and making sure that there are corrected links that really talk about sickle cell disease and what it is and able to educate communities that never heard about sickle cell disease, educate them. Um, also talking um, on social media about sickle cell disease and just basically making sure that collectively the information that's going out is, of course, correct information that's going out, but information that would reach the masses. Um, another way that we can educate is advocating, utilize community-based organizations. Um, as I said, we have 42 chapters, but there are hundreds of community-based organizations out there focusing on sickle cell disease. And the goal is how do we work with those community-based organizations to raise awareness and educate communities in their prospective areas? So one would be to advocate for them. They do very good work in working with patients and clients and helping them with their needs. And we feel like one of the best ways is to advocate for them and work with them and utilize them, refer individuals and families and people who want to get involved to those CDOs. And of course, um, bring attention to the disparities that exist within sickle cell disease. And so when you have an opportunity, um, begin to speak in your churches and in your communities with your professional organizations and associations about sickle cell disease and the disparities that exist. The third um, area which we can work with together, of course, is always elevating awareness. And of course, the challenges that Sanja, we're having difficulty hearing you. Everybody bear with us just one moment. It looks like we lost our panelist, Ms. Banks, for just a moment. So let's see if we can't get her back on the line. So I'm going to go ahead. Everybody, if you wouldn't mind just hanging in there with us for just a moment, um, we're going to try and get the audio back online for our panelist, Ms. Banks. Thanks, everybody, for your patience. Sometimes we encounter some technical difficulty. Um, hopefully, you can still see the screen. Um, Ms. Banks is on the Elevate Awareness screen. I just want to make sure everybody can see that. So if you could go ahead and type a message into the questions section of your panel, um, that would be helpful. Um, and I do see we got an earlier question about whether or not these slides will be available for later access, and they certainly will.
So if everybody, hi, Ms. Banks. Yes, I don't know what happened. <laughs> That's all right. Thanks, everybody, for your patience and hanging in there with us. Um, sometimes we do have some technical difficulty with the platform, so I'll let you jump right back into it. Thanks, everybody. Okay. I'll make sure everyone can still see my screen. I can see your screen just fine. And again, everybody, if you do have some technical difficulty, you can always go ahead and shoot me a message in the questions section of your GoTo um, webinar panel. And with that, I will let you get right back to it. Okay, perfect. Um, and I do apologize. Don't know what happened. But um, again, um, talking about sickle cell disease not uh, receiving mainstream focus, um, and we know that um, when you look at the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America compared to many other national organizations and you look at our budget, um, it is really not comparable. I'll, I'll be very honest in saying that our budget is probably less than 10% of, of what you see with breast cancer or cystic fibrosis or any of the larger organizations. And so we really rely on each other and the community uh, to work together collectively to raise awareness and make sickle cell disease more mainstream. Now more than ever with, uh, with social media, we're able to do that. Um, and so pretty much that's, that's what I mean by that challenge. Um, of course, we know that if you raise the right type of awareness and, and can produce a large audience um, to really pay attention and focus on sickle cell disease, that funding would increase, and particularly outside of, of the federal government, because we don't want to rely totally on federal funds uh, to support our sickle cell disease cause. And so that um, has been a huge challenge. And of course, um, we, we're working very hard now to make sure that larger organizations can make sickle cell disease a national priority. So these are some of the things that we can do. Of course, Make the sickle cell disease a part of your national agenda. So if you are with a, um, uh, an institution, a um, association, a fraternity, sorority, if you're with any type of organization, um, it's easy to go to your national and get sickle cell disease as a national, um, put on the national agenda. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to have um, newly created national uh, partnerships with, with um, Delta Sigma Theta um, sorority. Um, with the top ladies of distinction, um, with um, the um, American Society of Hematology. Um, they're choosing to focus um, heavily on sickle cell disease. And also um, the NAACP on a national level has just declared sickle cell disease a national priority this year. And so really getting more entities to do that um, brings, of course, more awareness. Um, joining in an upcoming um, public service and social media campaign. Um, there, are, there are campaigns out there that collectively uh, we can get involved in. Of course, um, we're right now working on our One Community, One Cause campaign, um, but there are so many uh, media campaigns and public service campaigns, and so joining one. Um, raising your voice collectively, of course, during World Day today, um, we celebrate and we focus and raise awareness throughout the month of June, um, although uh, World Day is June the 19th, and then also during Sickle Cell Awareness Month. But you have to understand that individuals living with sickle cell disease, they live it 365 days a year. And so we should be working together to collectively raise our voices every day. And then we can easily do that now that we do have social media. And then, of course, uh, um, one of the other ways is to become a member of FCDAA or to become a local member um, in one of your chapters or CBOs in your local area. Um, our, um, the last one, of course, is um, to donate. And, and I talk about it in raising funds and influence and giving. And of course, the key challenge is, of course, sickle cell disease receives um, significantly a disproportionate amount of funding from the community. So we not only receive disproportionate amounts throughout um, the federal government, but we're seeing the same um, throughout the world. And so how do we begin to raise more dollars and bring more dollars into um, many of the institutions that support sickle cell disease? Um, and one of the ways we can do that, of course, is to partner and support your local sickle cell disease organizations. Um, if you have good organizations locally in your area that are on the ground, they're doing good work. Um, it's easy to 
contact them, pay them a visit, call them, and find out some of the things that they actually do and the services they provide and support them. Um, locally, these organizations, they have walks, uh, they have sickle cell walks, they have runs, they have galas, um, they have awareness drives um, because they have to raise funds um, to, one, keep their doors open and also to expand their services and serve more patients and families. So, of course, um, getting, getting involved in supporting those organizations um, financially, um, joining, you know, national funding campaign um, to raise funds nationally. Um, we are kicking off our One Community, One Cause campaign. We kicked it off June 1. Um, it will run throughout the year. But campaigns such as the One Community, One Cause can raise significant amount of dollars that go back out into the community um, to serve our patients and populations. And then also influence others to give. I love to talk about the fact that until we start supporting one another and, and, and giving, we will never get others like, you know, big time celebrities and large donors who know nothing about sickle cell to give because they want to see what we're doing in our own community. How are we supporting um, what we do? Um, those of you who have friends and family um, that are involved with sickle cell disease and how are you supporting them and supporting given. We have national events all the time, but there's so many ways to give and contribute nowadays. Um, I just encourage everyone to consider the most innovative way for you to support the sickle cell disease cause. And so some of our upcoming events and initiatives um, that I wanted to talk a little bit about, and these are ways that you can help, is um, our fourth annual national walk is coming up. It's called the Annual Walk with the Stars. It's taking place August 26th this year um, in Baltimore, Maryland, which is where we're headquartered. But also, if you go to our website, you will see many of the sickle cell walks taking place across um, the nation and getting involved. So if you're not in Baltimore, if you do not want to set up a virtual team, we encourage everyone to set up a virtual team if you're not in the area and walk for sickle cell disease. Um, but also, if you want to get involved on a local level, participate in those local walks. Um, our One Community, One Cause campaign, again, it started June 1st. Um, it's running through December 31st. You all will be able to see um, many videos. We have celebrities that have joined this, this, um, this cause. Um, our goal is to uh, raise dollars between now and December, um, again, to expand services. Um, our texting code is um, you text break to um, 52,000 and and um, and give your donation. It's very easy to do. And I want to ask everyone, of course, before we get off this call, that you consider texting and making a donation. And if you don't feel comfortable texting, then go to our website and make that donation. Um, and then, of course, our national convention, which is an educational convention. It is the largest sickle cell convention um, um, right now in the U.S. Uh, we're very proud of it. This year we'll be um, having or hosting that convention in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's a perfect opportunity to come and get educated about sickle cell disease, meet others in the sickle cell community. So we invite you, if you're in the area, um, to drop by the conference and take part in what we're doing. Um, the great thing is we're celebrating our 45th anniversary, so this will be 45 years that SCDAA has been in existence, um, um, and it's been um, a great ride. So we invite everyone to participate and join us in the convention. Um, and I wanted to touch a little bit about this because we are really preparing um, for a national capital campaign. Um, we have not come up with a launch date, but I want to put this in everybody's ear because these are some of the areas where we know we really need to focus um, and we need funding to focus and we don't want to rely just on the federal government. And so we will be launching um, as a national, a national capital campaign. All of those funds, of course, that are being raised will not just go to SCDAA, uh, but these are just some of the areas that we are intending to fund and some of the entities. And we're really looking at funding um, comprehensive sickle cell centers throughout the nation. Uh, we're, of course, going to fund research. Um, we're looking at how do we um, bolster our national camp um, program throughout the nation um, and possibly globally. And then we have several global initiatives that we are going to support um, in the Congo, Haiti, Gambia, and, of course, Nigeria. 
So with that said, I will conclude by saying um, I always leave this slide up at the very end um, because it, it, it really kind of, to me, summarizes what we're all about. And it says, working together will ultimately create greater synergy throughout our community for the fight um, for individuals and families living with sickle cell disease. And it says, only together will we effectively be able to um, ensure access to care, quality treatment and new therapies, increase awareness, increase funding for services, build a stronger advocacy alliance, and of course, our one goal, number one goal, is to find a universal cure. Um, so this is something that we, I always leave with this young man, and this young man, um, he is an actual uh, individual living with sickle cell disease, and it says, before I try out for track, please find a universal cure for me. So with that said, I'll turn it back over. Ms. Banks, thank you so much for taking the time to drive home the good work that SCBAA does, but also how we can all be active voices in our own communities. And I'll go ahead and let everybody know as well, um, just as we're happy to do social media pushes for your foundation, Ms. Banks, that is true of all of the all of our audience today because we consider all, all of our participants or users here at Needy Meds, we consider them our partners at, as well. So if you are being vocal about sickle cell in your community, if you are participating in a run or a walk or an event, let, let us know and we'll be happy to spread the word on our social media accounts as well. Um, I want to remind everybody that you can feel free to go ahead and type any questions that you may have um, for Ms. Banks while we've got her. You can type them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar control panel, but of course we'll leave you with our contact information for our organizations at the end of the webinar. Earlier, um, we did get a question. We see a couple other ones coming in. Earlier, we did get a question about whether or not this presentation will be available, and yes, I'm going to email everybody a PDF of the PowerPoint presentations, and we're also working to convert today's webinar into a video, which will be posted on the, the Needy Meds YouTube channel by the end of the week, at the beginning of next week, at the absolute latest, and I'll send you a link to our YouTube channel as well. Um, we're also going to try and convince Ms. Banks to come back at a later time because it seems that there's so much progress being made with your organization. We'd love to give you the opportunity to bring us up to speed later in the year and certainly let us know how your campaign is going. I also sure. want to encourage, yeah, that would be wonderful. And I also want to encourage everybody to please check out that website, um, the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America, because it is chock full and robust with tons of information. Um, and Ms. Banks, we do have a couple of questions coming in directed to, to you. Um, sure. In general, if somebody were working with a grassroots organization or nonprofit, um, is there a way to go ahead and work with your organization or guidance you can provide, or in general, um, how do you go about working with other grassroots organization to you know, um, combine your efforts? Yes, absolutely. Um, so there are two ways. Um, one is if you're just wanting to work on the grassroots level and you do not have an organization of your own, um, you can go to our website and there's a list of community-based organizations um, and we're hoping that you would find one that's close to your area and reach out to them. You can also reach out to us. We do have a, a, a community outreach specialist and they will put you in touch with um, an individual in your area that you can work with. If you have a CBO and you're not a chapter or a member of SCBAA, um, we're always willing and, and open to working with any CBO, but we also invite you to become a chapter of SCBAA. Uh, we have three categories of um, chapters, so the first is direct service, and those are organizations that um, basically provide a full gamut of services to individuals with sickle cell disease. Um, they're similar to clinics. Um, they do their full service. Uh, we also have what we call support 
service agencies, and they focus mostly on, mostly on the supportive services like transportation assistance or prescription assistance or uh, any support service that will help a patient overcome barriers. And then the last are smallest organizations, and we call those advocacy organizations. And basically, they really just basically focus on raising awareness in their communities. So you can come in at any level. Our goal is whatever level that you come up in, uh, we want to help you get to the level or agency you desire to become. And so we invite all um, CBOs to join SCDAA. Um, but if you don't join, that doesn't mean we won't work with you. So just reach out and let us know what you want to do in the community, and we're more than happy to work with you. That's fantastic, and I get a very thorough answer. And we have, um, we have a couple of questions, just to shift gears, Ms. Banks, coming in about medication in general. And what I would like to just ask is a, a, a general question about if somebody has questions about a type of medication, if there's anything coming out on the horizon to control pain better, um, what is recommended, or just general information on medication, can that be found on your website and where would they go about getting such information? Yes, so um, we're always keeping up with the latest. So if you go on our website and you click under research, you should be able to find the latest updates on what's going on um, with new therapies. Um, so I would invite you to go there. Um, I will say there's only one FDA-approved drug right now uh, for the treatment of sickle cell disease, and that's hydroxyurea. Um, but we are on the horizon in that there are approximately 17 pharmaceutical companies now in the sickle cell disease space. And that is a record number um, in sickle cell history. Um, so we're hopeful that out of those, um, those, those new therapies on the horizon, um, that um, they will begin to come to fruition. Of course, we need your help in um, promoting um, clinical trial awareness and getting individuals to, that have sickle cell disease to look at what those, um, if they were a match to any of those, um, those clinical trials and get into those trials because we know that um, without us participating in those clinical trials, we will not be able to see those, those therapies come to fruition. Um, but there's a lot going on, and I would have loved to share, and I would love to come back and talk about those, um, but you can definitely find them on our website. You can also go to um, um, clinicaltrials.gov. Um, there are many websites out there that, that talk about um, those 15 to 17 companies and what they're doing. Um, many of them are in clinical trial phase two. Um, we have about four in clinical trial phase uh, three, and we have one that just actually finished um, clinical trials, and we're hopeful that we will have good results in the next month from the FDA. Well, in the next month, that that is quite impressive, and that record number that you said of 17 um, in the sickle cell anemia, um, which is unprecedented, you know, just a decade ago, I would imagine. Absolutely. And we do have um, a number of other questions coming in. They seem to be a little bit more specific, so those we will certainly follow up with you again via email, um, just so we can make sure we thoroughly answer um, your questions and uh, answer your questions as it's specific to your situation. We're also running out of a little bit of time, so I want to just wrap up um, pointing out a few things. One of them is right there on your screen, you can see a slide that indicates some upcoming MediMeds webinars. Um, and you can see we try and populate our calendar with overview webinars or Facebook questions and answers sessions that will really tell you about the work that we do, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But we also do our best to populate our calendar, calendar with healthcare topics and diagnosis-specific webinars, such as the one Ms. Banks conducted us for us today, and the one later in the month um, about breast cancer. As I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar, Needy Meds is a, a nonprofit organization dedicated to educating and empowering those seeking affordable health care. And what we essentially do is our goal is to connect patients to programs that offer them health care savings options for their medications or other expenses. So if you're interested in learning more about Needy Meds, we welcome you to attend our free monthly overview webinars. We have this one's coming up let's see, later this week, but we do those every month if you're interested. If you're interested. 
um, again, those of you that have asked questions and we haven't had a chance to answer them, we will certainly get back to you via email again with by tomorrow afternoon. Um, and there's the contact information for the SCDAA and, of course, the Needy Meds contact information as well. Um, of course, I want to wrap up by again thanking our guest today, and we'll keep everybody posted regarding when we can, um, when she'll be coming back to give us an update with what's going on with the campaigns, with the medications, and maybe dive a little bit more into the website and the specific resources they have to offer. Ms. Banks, this has been a wonderful presentation, very thorough and informative, so thank you for that. Um, to all of our audience, thank you for taking out your time at it was no doubt a busy Monday to join us, and we do hope everybody keeps in touch. Thanks, everybody, and have a healthy Thanks. and happy rest of the week. Take care, Ms. Banks. Take care, Thanks. audience. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.